We know there's one coming in Mexico. We know they're talking one in India um, and a few other places. I think one is South Korea, one in Indonesia, and they're just all around the world. Where do you think the next, you said there's going to be another three more gigafactories. Mm -hmm. Where do you think those will be? I've discussed actually with quite a lot of Indian people because for India, you hear a lot of diverging uh opinions you have people that tell you well india doesn't have a lot of expensive cars doesn't have the power the, the, the buying power to purchase then i have people that are on the grounds in india and tell me india is changing at a speed that nobody can even phantom so there will be a need for tesla cars especially if this 20 dollar uh, car comes out so i do believe india is would be a shame not to um not to get into India, just because it is uh, such a huge market. Uh, India also has a lot of trade agreements with other countries around where uh, it would be of benefit having produced in India. So, so India for me is one of the three that is a given. I believe Indonesia is the second one for the same reasons. Different um, population, different trade agreements, but also cheap, well-educated labor. South Korea is for me a hot contender, but it is more complicated in, in labor laws. Um, it is, you know, it is more, and, and I do believe, I've, I've looked a little bit at those, those trade agreements, it could become redundant given that both Indonesia and India have good trade agreements with, with South Korea. So if the import from those two locations come to South Korea, that would be it. I have a completely outside bet that um, is out there. You know, sometimes I'm just saying stuff that is not as reason, which is Brazil. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Why, why do yeah, I believe Brazil? Brazil? Because Brazil is obviously uh, South America. Currently, it's very complicated. I mean, obviously, you can ship it, cars from everywhere, but it's far to go to get to Brazil. I do believe Brazil is an upcoming market. It has actually a very educated uh, engineering population. Volkswagen had one of the biggest plans in Brazil for a very long time. So I do believe there is my joker. My number three is Brazil. Wow. Yeah, no, um, I, I do believe that Brazil is one of them. But then I was thinking the, the other day that their cars don't run on gas. It runs on sugarcane. Still, the market is there for EVs and the world's switching to EVs. But Brazil is one. I'm thinking for a geopolitical, um, strategic, because of China, because now we're seeing a lot of companies de-risking from China. Um, Indonesia is a very, very great yeah. place. That, that, that's always been one of my um, um, hot, hot spots for Gigafactor mm -hmm. being there. Um, India, India is, uh, we can say, I can definitely see one there. Um, I can definitely see one in Dubai. I can, it's so business friendly in Dubai, it's ridiculous. But do they have the, the workforce for it? Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. All the, all, look, here's the thing. All the, I guess you could say, workers that would do the construction, the cashiers, are either Filipinos or Indians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're from abroad. 10% of the population in Dubai is Emiratis. Mm -hmm. The rest, 90%, are foreigners. Yeah. Yeah. And they're the ones who's running the country. And if, have you been to Dubai, by the way? No, no, but I have good friends who live there. You have to go there for, uh, don't go now. Right now it's like 60 degrees right there. It's ridiculous. You won't survive. <laughs> but in the winter time, from November to yeah. like January, beautiful weather. It's, it's an amazing experience when you see how futuristic this country is. Mm. It's unbelievable. And we have, a f we have a few friends because we have, because, you know, we work with Dubai, we work with Qatar, we work with all these like, you know, regions and majority of their employees, they pay them like literally close to nothing. But yeah. for them, it's a lot of money because they go exchange sure. it to back to India or rupees or whatever. And yeah. it's a whole, it's like, it's like them making like what a teacher makes times 10, the amount of money they would make. Mm. So I, I'm not, I'm not worried about um, shortage of labor or how expensive it is. I just know that Dubai is a very friendly, a business friendly place to start a business. For example, here in Kuwait or any other Middle Eastern country, if you want to start a business, you have to, well, first of all, you can't buy the land. You just, you're, you're an expat. You mm. can't do it. Um, secondly, you can't own the business. You have to have 51% of the owner to a sponsor. That's yeah. just how it is. But in Dubai, it's not like that. In Dubai, you yeah. can get your own land. 
you can um, be your own. You know, you don't need no sponsor to own your own business. And mm-hmm. Tesla is looking for this type of partnership with countries because they don't yeah. want a third country, a third company in the middle. It, it would also things. be it would also be a middle finger to all the Gulf countries that are not opening up to to Tesla, right? But I think Dubai will have its joker when they will have full self-drive as the first country being, you know, authorized a uh, robo-taxi system. Um, I, I just don't see it for manufacturing also for, for, you know, really? proximity to, to exportation. It's going to be, it's going to be a challenge from Dubai to, to reach other markets. Um, a okay. second joker, if I can bring one would be North Africa, 